even make sense too, because let's say it ends up being loan with obligation. Okay. Let's say that's what it ends up being. Now we'll, we'll dive into that even more in a second, but let's say it ends up being with loan with obligation. Even if it was loan with option under a transfer ban, you can activate that. Pice, you remember what was the one acquisition we made in our transfer ban summer? It was Kovacic. It was Kovacic. Yeah, my boy. It was Kovacic. <laughs> my boy, how could I forget that? <laughs> Your boy. So those things can slide under a transfer ban, right? So, you know, we'll see how much Napoli plays ball on that because Napoli might want a lot of money up front. And of course, you know, we'll, we'll talk about Osimhen and the wages and all that stuff too. There, there are multiple angles to this, but even Chelsea can be like, you know what? Right now, it really doesn't fully fit within our budget to get Osman. But if we do kind of have an impending transfer ban here that we're sweating, we can get him now. We can kick the can down the road a little bit and we can still get that deal over the line, even with a transfer ban. And then we have, you know, the completed signature of Osman next summer. We have a Steval coming to us. We have Kendry coming to us. We have Gabriel, Gabriel Mech coming the following season. We have Ansel Mino coming to us. We have thousands of young players in the team. We don't just have Jorgensen, but we also have Mike Penders. We have Slonina out on loan. We're good. We're good. I think they're literally trying to anticipate almost anything they may need if they have a transfer ban ahead of time, ahead of time. Um, and I'm not saying a transfer ban will be the punishment. I would be stunned at this point if there wasn't at least one of a transfer ban or a points deduction. Stunned. I really would be. Um, now, hopefully it's a small points deduction, no transfer ban, and yippee ki uh, We're good, right? But I think you look at some of this movement, Pice, and you can say Bowley, a Bowley. No one should be mentioning Bowley's name anymore, by the way. Bowley ain't part of this. Bowley's name is here, but it, he ain't part of this. So that, it's 2024. People need to wake up to that. But you can say that, you know, Igbali and the directors, well, they like this model anyway. They're a little bit crazy. Maybe they're addicted to transfers. Maybe they have FOMO. Even if all of that is true, Pice, it doesn't explain this level of going out to get youngsters, if you know what I mean. It, it You can be a little obsessed about that, right? But when you're going past the point where even an Alex Goldberg, a Felix Johnston, you know, people who actually like really like, you know, trying to get the best youngsters from all over the world. If you're going past that point where even they are scratching their head, there's something up, Pice. There's something up. And I believe you're preparing for a rainy day. Maybe. But then again, I, I, whether it's points deduction and transfer ban, I'd expect more top-level sign-ins if this was the case. Because well, I, think the way, I think the way you prepare for that is by not just getting Osu and by getting you know a couple of other really top signings, especially if it's a points deduction. Like, say we was worried we won't get top four because we get deducted eight points. I wouldn't expect Philip Jorgensen's and Tosin Adarabayos this summer, you know? So I'm not sure, really. Uh, I, see well, the, I see the theory, but at the same time, I don't because I feel like we've been really non-ambitious this summer so far. Yeah, but I, I still wonder, like, how much can we actually do? You know, like, how many yeah. players can we take on this summer factually that have wages that are really not within our wage bracket? You know, would we be able to do a little bit more if somehow miraculously we got rid of Raheem Sterling this summer? Maybe, but, maybe. Like, at the same time, like, haven't we? I, I just, we've we've got rid of a lot of wages of our books, like, and also like, yeah, yeah. like I, I feel like we've already done that job, you know, last summer. Yeah, we still have uh, Sterling yeah. on the books. We still have Lukaku on the books right like, now. We still have Kep on the books right now. We're trying. We still have Chile on the books right now. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not saying we haven't got expensive players on the books, but I feel like we used to have a lot more. Compared, like I feel like we've trimmed it down quite a bit and kind of adjusted it, not to the level we want, clearly, but still, well, that's like, because oh, all of our new it. acquisitions, which are a ton, are obviously on much shorter wages. But I'm telling you, someone like Str the same way Tiago Silva was stretching out the uh, median age, you know what I mean? Like, you know, what was he, 38, 39, or something? And most of our team was young, but because he was there, he was stretching out the median age. Uh, you know, it, it, it's very similar to how Sterling is stretching out the median weekly salary, you know, and, and Lukaku and, and Kepa as well. Um, and I'm not going to claim to be at all a finance major here, but I, you know, as many people as I speak to that do know a lot more about football finances than I do, they say that absolutely there's a, a, a real uh, element to, you know, the top heavy weekly wage earners kind of fucking all of this up at the moment. Now, that's not their fault. It's not Sterling's fault. It's Bowling and Bali's fault for what was done that first summer. Uh, when, let's be real, I don't think they had the foresight on how bad they were in financially even with what happened uh, in the previous regime. So, you know, on Osiman specifically, that's where it does get interesting about, well, okay, if Chelsea are going to try and like make the deal officially official next summer for whatever reason, you know, whether it's 
because they do think that that could be the only move they could do next summer if they had a transfer ban or if they just can't do it right now and they want to just be able to do it once they get other wages off the books, right? They they just want to do it at a different time when things uh, alleviate financially a bit. Uh, whatever the reason is, if Chelsea are trying to you know, not pay a, you know, a true permanent sale right now where they would structure, they're not doing the release clause, obviously, but where they would, you know, structure it. And I'm sure Napoli would want, you know, a substantial amount up front. If they're trying to do something like loan with obligation, the question is how much do they have to pay now? What's, what's the loan fee like, right? Uh, what are the wages like, of course, with Victor Osman? What do Chelsea need to do in order for Napoli to be cool with loan up with obligation? But Napoli really will be ultimately cool with obligation as long as Chelsea play ball a little bit because they know obligation means we're getting the money. And the same way Fabrizio said it, Osiman and his camp will be a lot cooler with obligation because once again, it really means, I think Fab, you know, you aggregated this price, but Fab basically is saying loan with obligation isn't a loan, right? Like, Okay, semantics. It really we're, we're we're doing semantics here. It is a loan, Fab, but it's a loan with obligations. So yes, you're right because it's much more of a certainty that an actual purchase is made. Um, so you know, it, it's said by Ornstein this morning. Well, the clubs are discussing, and, and this is not me being biased towards Ornstein or doing like Ornstein PR or anything like that. But I just thought people really lacked critical thinking this morning and, and, and ability to read. Ability to read, and we and we can go back to it. Like let's, and, and I know Ornstein's pinned it, right? Um, so yeah, let's is there anything it. in that, by the way? Because he never pins tweets. I thought that sure. was strange. Sure. So Napoli in ongoing talks with Chelsea to sign Romelu Lukaku, while discussions between Napoli and Chelsea also taking place about move for Victor Osman in opposite direction. Lukaku would be permanent. Osman season long loan plus buy option. Okay, so. First of all, now, maybe because it's less words, people will then kind of think, oh, hold on. He meant that this is going to be a swap, and he means that if it happens, it's going to be a buy option. Uh-uh, not my understanding, okay? So these are being discussed at the same time, but these would not be a, a, a swap for swap. This would not be what Bowley has always dreamed of, a trade, right? An American trade, a, a direct swap. Uh, if anything, it would be, okay, we'll, we'll talk about Lukaku, because we are. We'll talk about Osman because we are, but they're still going to be separate deals. Now, what we do in the Lukaku deal still might cross over to how then we treat the Osman deal, but they are going to be separate. They're going to be separate. And, and there's nothing that Orenstein's saying that isn't saying that, okay? Um, and then furthermore, he is saying that there are talks ongoing, there are discussions, okay, discussions between where this has been discussed in option. Doesn't mean it'll happen. Doesn't mean it'll happen. Now, furthermore, Victor Osman's agent, if you if you want to get technical, because you should get technical on something like this, refuted nothing that David Ornstein said in technicality. Refuted nothing. And once again, David Ornstein is not saying the buy with uh, the option to buy will happen. He's saying it has been discussed. Doesn't mean it'll happen. It has been discussed. So Victor Osman's agent put it your shoes on as Victor Osman's agent, if you'd like to, just for a second. Think about how things have dramatically changed for you and your client in a matter of 12 months. 12 months ago, had a, a sale really taken place after that unbelievable season he had, there would have been, if ADL was an ADL, right? There would have been plenty of clubs ready to pay a much higher price for a permanent transfer with a loan of option or obligation never even being uttered, never even being uttered. The word loan would have been a curse word. It would have been a sin 12 months ago, right? And now even recently with all the dry activity on Osiman because of the release clause stance that ADL has had, even recently PSG register an interest, a genuine interest. Osiman agrees personal terms, which of course means there's something that agree with the agent and PSG as well. You're not a dummy watching this. I know you're not. You know that PSG are the team that are going to take care of someone financially, not just the player, not just the family, but the agent, okay? Now, all of a sudden, Victor Osiman's deal with PSG has gone cold from a club-to-club -club standpoint, meaning the agent's potential money is also not happening. Now, all of a sudden, the guy that he's supposed to help market, right, the agent, who he's supposed to market, his client, Victor Osiman, now the newest talks... Uh, talks, discussions, not actuality of will it happen or not, 
But now the next step of talks being tweeted out by, you know, basically renowned as the most credible in terms of hit rate, David Ornstein. And then Fabrizio even yesterday saying that Napoli are now offering or, or speaking about Osimhen and Lukaku talks. Now, all of a sudden, it's getting away from Osimhen's agent's control. Now, all of a sudden, his client, Osimhen, is being mentioned in a possible deal for another striker whose value has drastically plummeted in Lukaku's. It wouldn't be a good thing right now for Osimhen. If you're Osimhen's agent, it's not a good thing for Osimhen's name to be attached to Lukaku's in this way because Osimhen is much more in his prime and his trajectory is still much higher than Lukaku's. Lukaku at this point, for the last few seasons, whether he scores goals or not still, he has literally been passed around. It's like the Will Smith thing from Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Who want me, man? Why does no one want me? That, that's where Lukaku is, you know, making promises to teams, getting rejected by teams. So now, of course, having it out there from Fabrizio Romano and David Ornstein that, that Victor Osman's future and fate is now tied to Lukaku's fate, that's a bad look for uh, Osman's agent. A, a very bad look. When not that long ago, like I said, a bunch of teams would have just paid straight up for Osman if it wasn't for the release clause. And even recently, PSG at least went as far to agree personal terms. And now, as of today, you have loan with buy option even being mentioned by someone credible. So what is it on now for Osimhen's agent to do? Remind the world of the client you have. And that's basically what half of his tweet was, mentioning that he was the um, you know top scorer for Napoli uh, winning their third Scudetto, you know, trying to remind you of what he was just a year ago with no real refute, with no real direct refute. Didn't say he's not going to Chelsea. Didn't say he wouldn't be in a separate deal that was still related to Lukaku. He used the word exchange, which was meaning he was refuting basically that the, you know, he's not going to go into a simple swap. And that was the other part of it is half the stuff that he was refuting. And I put that in quotes, refuting was more just, hey, this isn't going to be some simple overnight deal. Sure. Lukaku to Napoli, Osman to Chelsea. Boom. It's a bad look once again for Osman's agent. This is this is a guy who's 25, Osman. If you're, if you're an agent of a player who's 25, who has, of course, had, you know, Saudi Arabia, who will pay so much, but PSG, Arsenal registering an interest, Chelsea registering an interest. It wasn't that long ago that last year, Bayern, at least through plenty goal, who take with a grain of salt, was registering an interest, right? All the top clubs, not all of them, but many of them registering an interest. Now, all of a sudden, you know, Osimhen's agent has had a pride hit. This is a massive, massive pride hit. And I don't even blame him for his tweet today. It's not like I'm going at the guy. I mean, I'd probably be doing the exact same thing. Hey, Alex. Reminding the world once again, hello, hello, like this isn't somebody you should just, you know, laissez-faire, just throw into a swap deal with Lukaku, uh-uh. And now, if you want to take it a little bit further, is there also an extra motive of maybe a, a come get me plea to PSG? Like, hello, you know, PSG, hello, like, let's get this thing back on. Maybe, but as I understand things, there's there's nothing imminent on that front. And, and this is not all smoke and mirrors just so PSG enter the game again. They could enter the game again. They absolutely could. But this is not some facade just to redirect it all back to PSG. There's genuine interest on all sides here. Genuine interest. Now, on Victor Osman's side, it, unless once again, Chelsea have moved the goalposts recently on what they would pay a player wage-wise, I do not believe that Victor Osman, we had Ed Aarons this morning say that Victor Osman wants to go to Chelsea. Um, Ed Aarons is, is very reliable overall. And like I said, has phenomenal connections to African football as well. Um, so, you know, it, I, I think it's clear that if you've poked around enough, Victor Osman and Chelsea has been something that he's always been open to. And open to is probably light. Always something that he's been pretty excited about. Okay. And many people in his circle as well, excited about that thought. So unless Chelsea have recently moved the goalposts even more drastically on what they would pay a player, and I don't really think they have, if they had any thought about getting Nico Williams, which of course they've had some thought about it, then I don't think what you would have to pay Nico Williams would be really that much different than what you would have to pay Victor Osim. So I do not believe, I still do not believe that if the deal doesn't happen, and I, I, I you know, you could end up getting to be wrong on this, if you're Alex Goldberg or anybody else who's saying this, sure. And that would suck, but it is what it is. My my belief is that if it doesn't happen, it won't be because the club's agreed on everything, but Osiman said, nah, sorry. Sorry, Chelsea. I need that 10K more. I ain't going there. I do not think Victor Osiman will be the reason why the deal doesn't happen. Okay. Now, maybe with a little age and influence, who knows? Who knows? Not sure about that. But if it's down to Victor Osiman himself, nope, I do not believe.